Islam provides guidelines for a comprehensive system of life, and it also provides guidelines on economic business and commerce. Islam gives a complete model of an economic system according to the principles of Islamic economic system. Allah is the ultimate owner of the wealth and resources available to the human beings in the world. He, Allah, has created humans as his representative on earth and asked to manage and benefit from this wealth and resources in a way prescribed by him. Islam discourages idleness that results in poverty. In fact, it encourages the economic activities, trade and business within the permitted boundaries. Wealth cannot be accumulated and hoarded in few hands. It needs to be exchanged amongst individuals through trade and mutual consent. There is a due share of every individual who lacks the ability in the surplus wealth earned by an able individual. This due share is transferred to them in the form of inheritance. Will, zakat, and sadaqah, one is accountable for one's earning and expenditure to Allah. The importance of understanding scholars' accomplishments in their degrees cannot be overstated in order to ensure the long-term viability and development of modern economics, both during the lifetimes of Muslim scholars or Western scholars. However, writers on the history of economy theory have tended to overlook Muslim intellectuals' contributions to the field since the beginning of time. Islamic economy is at mercy of all nature and is not constrained by the nation's economic, cultural, social, or political structures. During the reign of Khalifah al-Rashidin, the Islamic economy of the Abbasid period was flourished. Let's have a look on the scholars' economic of thoughts from the mentioned era. Imam Abu Yusuf Imam Abu Yusuf was a well-known religious lawyer and one of the Hanafi school's founder. Abu Yusuf was supported by Abu Hanifa for his remarkable intelligence. Abu Yusuf wrote Kitab al-Haraj. Most of the discussion in his Kitab is about agriculture and taxation. He opposed the Kabbalah system since it constituted mistreatment of the poor and substituted the Mizah tax system, fixed tax, with the taxation of Mukasama, proportional tax. Abu Yusuf also opposed oppression and promotes justice and social welfare as these were his top priorities for administration. Imam Al-Ghazali Imam Al-Ghazali was known in medieval Europe as Al-Ghazal. Imam Al-Ghazali wrote the Iya Ulumuddin Kitab. In the kitab, he highlights the disadvantages of barter system. He also highlights that money is important and is functioned as a medium of transaction and a common measure of value. Ibn Khaldun Ibn Khaldun is known as the father of economics in Islam because of his diverse knowledge in many fields. Ibn Khaldun is infamous for his work, Muqaddimah. Ibn Khaldun's theory is that categorization of labor skills will improve the mobility of work and eventually will boost production. Other theories of his is that economic life is one method of executing a supply and demand balance, the relationship between total production and consumption rates, as well as the rate of wage payment based on total production demand of products. Western scholars believe that economic system is where human activity is satisfying life's needs, like maximizing satisfaction and profit for their own interests. Aristotle he is a Greek philosopher who was a pupil of Plato and a teacher of Alexander the Great. 
His economy of thought is his realization of the critical relevance of private property. He emphasized that common traits of private property are it leads to advancement, conflict prone, existed everywhere, inherited by human, and enable for moral action. Adam Smith He is very known as the father of economics in Western civilization. His economic thoughts is mostly discussed in his book, The Wealth of Nation. He is also best known for commercializing the phrase the invisible hand to describe how self-interest leads to efficient utilization of resources in a country's economy. He believes in laissez-faire system where government interference should be minimized in economic market. Karl Marx Karl Marx had completed 800 pages of manuscripts that later be published as Das Kapital. Karl Marx had the same thought as Ignor Holden, the theory of labor and value and surplus value. He also believed that one day the capitalism system will fail due to the underlying tensions and inconsistencies that happen from humans' greed. Big news. The rise of poverty rate in several countries is alarming and this is because of the political conflict and government instability which affect the economic system. The gap between the rich and the poor widen, especially in countries practicing capitalism where they only concern about their own interests. Your dignity is tied to every other human being on earth. When millions of us struggle to survive, human energy is diminished. When so many of us are still hungry, human potential is suffocated. Poverty has many forms, but no borders. To become fully human, we must free ourselves from the tyranny of poverty and from the grip of hunger everywhere. As we end poverty, true prosperity begins. As we end hunger, we all start to flourish. We have the ability, means, and capacity to create a world where all humans have dignity and our potential is fully realized. This is the story you are shaping. There are few ways to restore the economic system according to Islam. First is Zakat. Zakat is one of Islam's five fundamental foundations which provide both peace and love in society. Zakat will minimize the social tensions as well as reducing the gap between the rich and the poor. Other remedies recommended by Islam to solve economic problems are to be more dynamic in production, not to receive nor give bribe, and to live in simplicity. All in all, we can apply the ways or practices of Prophet Muhammad wasallam and his companions as well as theories of economic thoughts of Muslim scholars to get out from an economic crisis.